Now that we have the basics down for writing Lewis structures, we're going to look at something a little bit more complex, a little bit more complicated. Not more difficult, not something you can't handle. You're going to see that we're going to run into a little bit of a stumbling point in the middle of trying to write this, write the Lewis structure for this compound. And let's start where we started with the other. We need to know how many valence electrons each of these atoms have. We've already looked at this in the uh, video on how to determine valence electrons. We've talked about it in class. This carbon has four valence electrons, and the oxygen, and oxygen would have six valence electrons. Remember, however, there are two oxygen atoms, so we have to multiply that by two. And if we want to know the total, we have to add the oxygens together with the carbon to figure out the total number of valence electrons. So four plus Six times two is 12. 12 plus four, 16 total valence electrons. Okay? So the next step, how do we determine what the central atom is? Well, again, we've got two things going for us here. There's, only, there's an atom where there's only one of the carbon, and we said carbon's always a central atom. So we're going to start with carbon in the center, two oxygen atoms, one on either side. Again, just drawing it with this connectivity because that seems like how I would put it together down on paper. But to be honest, you could draw this at a right angle if you wanted to. You could draw it down like this. It's a Lewis structure. We're not determining or inferring any geometry. We may learn a little bit later, or as we get more experience, we're going to know from looking at a Lewis structure what the geometry would be. We might write it in a certain way. But for now, we're just trying to get the proper Lewis structure down on paper. So, we've taken our 16 electrons total that we have. We have added two, four, in terms of bonds. So four bonding electrons. End up with 12 electrons total left over. So we still have to add 12 more. Okay, so we're going to jump to the terminal atoms. We worried about carbon at the beginning. Now we're going to jump to oxygen. Okay, we're going to start adding electrons in, terms of in lone pairs to oxygen until it ends up with its full octet. So it's got two from the bond. Now it's got four because it has one lone pair. Six, eight. Okay? Now remember we have 12 electrons to add. We've added two, four, six. Let's look at this oxygen. Okay, it's got two electrons. Now it's got four. Now it's got six. Now it's got eight. We've added two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. That's the twelve, all right? So we've added twelve more electrons that are lone pairs. Subtract that. We have no electrons left over. We've added all the electrons we have. So let's check. We've looked at oxygen, although we've counted this before whenever we were adding them. It's got two, four, six, eight electrons around it. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. The oxygens are PG keen. They're fine. They're exactly where they want to be. They want to have eight electrons. They each do. This is where the stumbling block comes in, because now we've got to go check carbon. And carbon is not happy about this arrangement. This carbon only has two, four electrons around it. It wants to have eight. Remember the nature of a molecular or covalent compound. The nature is that we're sharing electrons between two atoms. So we might say, how do we, or how would that carbon get enough electrons to have a full octet around it? And the answer is, Oxygen shares more electrons with it. It's got lots of lone pairs here and here. Sees the carbon only has four electrons around it and doesn't want to be that way. So this oxygen is going to share a pair of electrons with that carbon. What does that look like in terms of structure? So now this oxygen only has four electrons left in lone pairs. 
and there are now two bonds between that oxygen and that carbon atom. This oxygen's still good. Haven't done anything to it. This oxygen, oxygen that's shared has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. It's still good. The carbon, still grumpy. Two, four, six. Wants to have eight. So where is it going to get its, its other set of electrons from? Well, two answers to that question. All right? One of them better than the other, but we're going to look at why one is better than the other later. Right now, I'm just going to tell you where they come from, because they could come from here or they could come from there. But again, I want to get into that when we talk about formal charge. Okay? Because what we've done is we've written what, are two, what would be considered two resonant structures of carbon dioxide. They sort of meet everything that fits a proper Lewis structure, but some resonant structures better match what the true um, molecule looks like in nature. Um, and that's what we're going to use formal charge to determine. So this is actually the oxygen that's going to loan that pair of electrons or share it with that carbon. We'll talk about why whenever we're looking at formal charge here coming up. Um, but when it does that, what does it look like? Well, we've got an oxygen here. It has four electrons in lone pairs, and it has two bonds to carbon. And we've got this oxygen over here that now only has two, uh, two sets of lone pairs uh, along with it, but it has two bonds to carbon. Now, let's check just to make sure we haven't screwed something up. We've added electrons somewhere else. Let's check the total number. We need to have 16 total electrons. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We're good. 16 total electrons. Now, let's check octet. That was the problem before. Oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8. Oxygen is good. Let's check the other oxygen. 2, four, six, eight. It's good. Now let's check the carbon. Two, four, six, eight. It's good. We have a proper Lewis structure. All the octets are met, okay? Um, and we have added the, the number of valence electrons that we should. So if we were trying to write the proper Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, that's what we'd write. Again, we're going to come back to how do we know which oxygen donates or shares electrons? Why couldn't this one share another pair and leave that one as it is? We're going to look at that problem in a second um, in the next video when we talk about um, something called formal charge and how we can use formal charge to determine which is an appropriate resonance structure. So until then, um, work some examples of these. It takes some practice, but there is a method to doing them. You can see there are a discrete set of steps that you work through and you end up with the proper number the proper Lewis structure at the end.